Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Sub-Saharan Africa, these are photographs from the Congolese journalist Stanis Bujakera of yesterday's meeting between Kabila and his successor Shishi Kedi at the presidential palace via the optics. And I go back to the 7th of January when I was quoting Via Snipal in a bend of the river who wrote, it isn't that there's no right and wrong here, there's no right. Sure Kamhunga tweeted, Tito Mbweni has the most unenviable task of presenting a budget on Wednesday that balances between cash-strapped consumers, a struggling economy, rising unemployment, the parlous state of ESCOM, and the threat of a fiscal cliff that may trigger a downgrade not made easy being the election year. I couldn't resist this in the Mail and Guardian. It seems that the EFF has now dumped its commitment to Marxist, Leninist, phalangist, flopperist political ideals and moved into a new realm, the theatre of the absurd. This is a view from the top of Table Mountain in Cape Town taken by our, by our very own Truth Slinger. South African all shares up 3.59% year-to-date. Dollar versus Rand back above 14. This is a one-year chart. You know, we've been range-bound for eternity. Egypt's location in its region makes it a link between the Arab world, Africa and Europe, so it affects and gets affected when it comes to the security and stability of these three areas. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Egyptian pound at 1750. My article over the weekend, which doesn't seem to have been published, was about Nigeria deciding. Last week, President Cyril Ramaphosa closed his speech quoting Ben Okri. We dream of a new politics that will renew the world. Under their weary, suspicious gaze, there's always a new way, a better way that's not been tried before. This week, Nigerians 84 million are registered to vote. We're intending to go to the polls in the country's sixth general election since military rule ended in 1999. In fact, the Nigerian vote is the largest democratic event in African history, economist. The elections were postponed at 2.40 a.m. on election day. The Nigerian Electoral Commission pronounced that the general elections were postponed by a week. Charlie Robertson tweeted, Nigeria decides, but not yet. Postponement is typical. 2011 elections were pushed back twice. The second time when the parliamentary vote had already begun. In 2015, they were delayed by six weeks, roughly a week ahead of time. Like Ben Okri's preferred literary genre of magic realism, Nigerian politics has spun some surreal narratives of its own. Who can forget the legendary pleasure seeker General Sani Abacha, President Umaru Yara Dua, who allegedly was kept alive or not for a number of days in an ambulance at the State House grounds? Even the austere President Buhari went missing for a few months. The significance of the Nigerian elections for Africa is tremendous, said Professor Nick Cheeseman. A flawed election and the political instability this could generate will not only undermine confidence in the feasibility of democracy in one of Africa's most important states, but also slow economic growth in West Africa and the wider region. David Pilling calls it a system where candidates jump between political parties as if they were changing buses, personality and money, Trump policy discussion. It's a Nollywood level drama, but permit to give you some context. GDP growth has lagged population growth. GDP grew by 1.93% last year, up from 0.82% in 2017 and grew 2.4% in the fourth quarter. Nigeria was the second biggest economy in Africa in 2018, using the market exchange rate of 362 naira to the dollar, or the biggest economy using the fixed rate. That's Charlie again. 
Unemployment has risen from 8.2% to 23.1% under President Buhari's watch, which would be a plain untenable position for any incumbent politician seeking re-election in most parts of the world. The President is a victim of low oil prices, which provide 70% of government revenue. Baba Goslo has to be contrasted with President al-Sisi's Egypt. Al-Sisi and I for one disagree with him on many things, particularly with his incarceration strategy, made bold moves when it came to the economy. Egypt devalued its currency early, took a brutal punch in the solar plexus, but is now reaping the dividend from its bolder economic policy. Nigeria is still muddling along with its voodoo level FX economics. Since President Buhari came to power in May 2015, Nigeria's stock market has fallen more than any other in the world, dropping 50% in dollar terms. There is a message in that performance. The stock market has perked up over the last few sessions, however. Atiku Abu Bakr, the main challenger to Mr. Buhari, is also in his 70s. It is an extraordinary outcome that as the continent becomes younger, our leaders in many cases are getting older. This elastic band, the difference between the average age of leadership and the average age of its citizens, is now stretched to breaking point and will snap. Abu Bakr struck a Bill Clinton circa 1992 note when he kept chanting, it's the economy stupid. Abu Bakr's mantra is, let's get Nigerians working again, citing Margaret Thatcher. He says he wants to privatize state-owned firms, which frankly is the optimal economic policy if it's done fairly and increases ownership in the Nigerian economy. I saw the Thatcher revolution up close and personal and it worked. From Ethiopia to Nigeria to many other parts of Africa, governments are running out of headroom and they absolutely need to embrace Thatcherism. It is a silver bullet. We have seen a number of elections in Africa overturning incumbents is a thankless task, but not too long ago we saw a number of upsets in West Africa. However, recently we witnessed a Nollywood level plot twist in the DR Congo and it's clear the will of the people was not expressed in the result. Mr. Becky, this is Tabo's brother, said they are aware that the rest of the world is busy with bigger issues. Things are most likely to get worse before they get better. And then from the article in The Economist, we are tired of these same old leaders. We are laying the foundation for a revolution in 2023. Until then, Nigeria will be stuck with mediocrity, pronounced The Economist. This is a list of Africa's longest reigning heads of state from AFP. As we know, the elections are now on hold until the 23rd of February. Um, the all share is up 4.09% year to date. As I said, there's been a bit of a recovery in the last few sessions. Ghana Stock Exchange is down 2.97% year-to-date. Ethiopia and Djibouti have signed a deal to build a pipeline to transport Ethiopian gas to an export terminal in the Red Sea. Ethiopia found extensive gas deposits in its eastern Ogaden Basin in the 1970s. China's PolyGCL Petroleum Investments has been developing the Caleb and Hilala fields since signing a production sharing deal with Ethiopia in 2013.